I ran a little experiment the other day. It is horribly non-scientific, but I did it to prove a point. I went to Babblefish and typed in the following phrase. Yes, I realize Babblefish is horrible at translating, but I'm doing it to prove a point once again. Then I translated the phrase into Greek since much of the Bible was written in Greek. Then since I didn't have any other translation option, I then converted that sentence into French. Then I converted it to Italian since it is the child of Latin and the King James Version of the Bible was translated from Latin. Then I translated it back into English. Now compare the two. You can sort of get the meaning that the original translation had, but at the same time the precision and intensity of what you were originally trying to say is completely lost. This is because words themselves have differing and multiple meanings depending on the area, people, or point in time. Therefore, a direct translation is pretty much useless when it comes to language. This is why I have to laugh at King James only Christians. Their book is translated from Old Hebrew, much of which was originally written at the beginning of that language's literacy, causing ridiculous ambiguity, such as the fact that ancient Hebrew doesn't have vowels, Greek and Aramaic, then translated into Latin, and then into Middle English. Forget what you may miss from the movement of Middle to Modern English. The translation jumps across two languages has been proven to have very harsh effects on the meaning from the original text. King James Version is one of the most inaccurate versions of the Bible, very pretty to read, but sorely lacking in context and clarity. The most accurate is probably the American Standard Version, the World English Bible, or the Revised Standard Edition. These also have their own translation problems. King James Version only people claim these other versions are frauds made by the Catholic Church to suppress the truth of the real Bible. If you cross enough languages and enough time, the original meaning could be completely lost or be interpreted to mean something else entirely different. Many times, just to catch a meaning in a text or movie, you have to actually live in the area to get the meaning. I knew a girl from the UK who loved American movies and visited the US. Upon arriving here, she was ridiculously disappointed. All of our movies show America as being glamorous and almost futuristic with amazing architecture. Upon her arrival, she was shocked to find out just how cookie cutter all of our architecture is. In the U.S., we don't preserve our old buildings, unfortunately. We knock them down so we could build a mall that looks just like another mall. Our movies fill that gap for us in some ways, so we can enjoy good architecture without actually having much. This gives a false impression to people abroad, and we don't even think about it here. One of my bosses is Mexican and uses the phrase, best regards, at the end of all her emails. This isn't exactly inaccurate, but it appears stuffy as the word is usually used when either you are sending a business letter to someone you will never meet, or as something you say to someone who's going away and you'll probably never see or hear from them again. There is an implied meaning that will not be picked up unless you live in the thick of it. Crossing cultures and languages will awaken just how fluid and unprecise a language is without actually living in the culture. It is when I went to the Middle East and Europe that I began to question my faith in the absolute truth of the Bible. I began reading the Bible in the Middle East, the area where the Bible was written, and all of the nice happiness and hopefulness it always gave me was drained out and the Bible became a rather dark and cynical book, one written not by people of luxury, but by a people who had survival on their minds. Even if it was absolute truth, there's no real way I could get the exact meaning of what was being said unless I traveled back in time. Even if you can comprehend language differences, you now have to think fourth dimensionally about it. Look at any book from just a hundred years ago, and many words will not have the same meaning. Queer, fag, and gay in those days meant completely different things. Oral tradition without literacy fluctuates with even more volatility. One of the reasons why Ebonics is not considered a real language is because it fluctuates and changes way too fast to set any established rules. Ebonics and slang are many times used as a way to challenge the ruling power, and as the Hebrews were quite often not the ruling power, who knows how ridden the Bible is with slang even when a good scribe will try their best not to use it. If you try to translate a Bible passage from the wrong era, the meaning could be completely different. 
Just look at the Gettysburg Address. To a person of the future who didn't understand the change in language and tried to do a direct literal translation, four score and seven years ago may be interpreted as a game was being played seven years ago with a scoring of four points. Quite a lot different from just being a fancy way of saying 87 years ago. Language mutates and has a quantifiable and predictable mutation rate, just like genes do. They can't predict what changes are going to occur, but they can predict the rate of change with extremely close accuracy. This is why we can link English as being a distant ancestor of Indian Sanskrit, which evolved from another language that developed around the Iranian Kazakh region, which is how we can trace with some certainty the history of human migration. It is also why English is considered an Indo-Aryan language as opposed to a Semitic language. Language evolution also goes against the Bible, as all languages according to the Bible were created at the Tower of Babel, but you never hear a creationist railing against this theory. However, now that I've brought it up and made them aware of the evidence, they may rail against it as well. Just like with species, language evolution is dependent on terrain, environment, neighboring languages, and invasive languages. If a people become isolated, they will begin to evolve off the direct path of other languages that it came from. We borrow and exchange words with other languages, and if social or political pressures call for it, or new discoveries occur, we will invent a new word or reinvent an old word giving it new meaning. This is called jargon. Every field or job you have ever worked in has jargon. The military is especially rife with it. If you try to directly translate military words to regular English, you would be lost as it is filled with slang, tradition, and large quantity of acronyms. In their field, these are time savers and everyone knows what you're talking about, but to an outsider it would sound confusing and crazy. Science is nothing but jargon, one of the reasons it is confusing and hard to understand. Why trick was so easily spun against the scientific community in terms of the hacked climate change letters. Trick is a mathematical term for a creative way to approach a problem. It has nothing to do with dishonesty or level of accuracy. Theory is another one of these words that confuse the public and because of it I've had to make two videos on the subject and still get that evolution is just a theory. Anyone who can base their entire future on an ancient book that has been translated over and over again without full understanding of the era's culture and language is living in a world no different from someone who makes up their own imaginary world to live in. They both have equal evidence for their beliefs. One just doesn't have an ancient book to back it up. However, because we're prone to blind faith and belief, as well as the parochial effect, where we assume that because the world is a certain way where we are, then the entire world must be that way and has always been that way. Only through travel, experiencing diversity, and study of our vast world and knowledge can we begin to destroy our own illusions based on ignorance, none of which is our fault, but it has kept us trapped nonetheless.